Praise the Lord. The title of my message today is very, very strong. And the Holy Spirit spoke this word to me. He said these three words. And before I tell you, I'm going to pray. Lord, I thank you for the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, let your fire fall in ways we've not seen in these days. And here's the miracles that are going to happen. Healings, deliverances, yes, but financial breakthroughs. People to increase in their businesses. People to be given new opportunities and things. And they don't understand how it happened. I found some testimonies that I'm going to read to you in a few moments. People wrote to me saying this, they, and this is a recurring theme. I don't know how this happened. I don't understand it. It was suddenly, it was unexpected. I, I didn't even conceive of it, and yet this happened. It was, see, that's a, that's a part of the miraculous that a lot of people don't know. They think the miraculous is just this or that or this or that, but it's many, multi, it's multi-purpose and multifaceted. And Lord, you are going to cause breakthroughs for people like they've never seen. Last Sunday, the Lord said, breakthrough comes on the wings of praise. And I spoke about the atmosphere of praise from you to God and God's touch upon us, but also the atmosphere of, you know, praise and well-being and celebration in the life of the individual with everyone around them, everything they're doing, you know, the ways that they're operating, everybody's in a happy celebratory mode. Let me give you one thing right now before I give the title. <laughs> or should I give the title first? Let me just do the way I'm flowing. The Lord wants you, definitely me and definitely you, to walk away from everything that's non-conducive for your success, no matter what it is. Relationships, environments, people, connections, even things within your own self that you have to work on. And thus, I, that brings me to the title of this message. Here's the three words the Holy Spirit said. Resign from adversity. Resign from adversity. Scriptural references will be the book of 3 John and also the book of Luke chapter 4, and I know I'll get into several others by the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, riveting revelations on the mind of God for us and what He actually will do for us. A friend of mine jokingly said in America, while he was preaching, he said, I think a lot of preachers really don't even believe in God. Or they don't believe He's as strong and potent and powerful and able to work as, as he really is. You know, we say we believe, we hope to believe, we hope so, we wish so. If anybody says, do you believe God can do this? Oh, yes, I believe. But are you going to see it? Oh, well, let's see, you know. No, you can't be like that. Faith wavering is not real faith. It becomes doubtful. It becomes doubt. And your decision-making ability becomes problematic for you when you don't decide on one course and stay, stay with it no matter what. There was a man that was rescued from the Titanic. He was one of the head staff guys. I, don't, I can't remember the department he was in. Was he a head chef or head something, a maitre d' or I don't know what he was. He was a top guy. And he... Uh, <laughs> He, he, he figured out a way to, you know, escape, you know. And he started throwing food on the lifeboats and stuff like that from the kitchen. I think he was the, I think he was the, head, the head chef. And then uh, when one boat was going to go, he was about to jump in it. And he decided to let, you know, more women and children jump in. And he, he stayed by, behind. Then he jumped on something else. I don't know what it was. He threw chairs in the water for people to float on. I think he jumped on one of those, and the guy was rescued. He was rescued because he did something crazy. He drank some stuff, I won't say what it was, and it, it made his blood, you know, his, his, him to be numb that the coldness of the water didn't kill him like it killed everybody else. 
he was anesthetized by some, you know, beverage that we don't fool with, but it's, it's a part of the story. But who knows how all that was set up, and then he ends up getting rescued, and he lived into the 1980s. I think he lived to almost 80 years old. A very old man, however old he was. How did he get rescued? He had, a, he had it in his mind. That's just one example from a, you know, a secular story, whatever I could say. He, he, had, he had the victory inside of him. He just had it in his mind. He went, as soon as the thing started to sink, the ship started to sink, he went to work on what to do. He saw the lifeboats. He told the people where to go. He threw all the food in the lifeboats. Uh, he went and, you know, uh, uh, anesthetized himself. You know, all of that. And then, and then got rescued. You know, he, he, he set it out in his mind. I'm talking about the power of the mind. I know people in the church are scared. You know, people talk about all spirit or it's all some emotional cultural drama that we call church or whatever. And people don't think. You have to have it in your head if you're going to have it in your hands. I can't tell you how many regrets and how much pain. I have the license to preach on this and teach on this because I, I've, I've experienced a lot of pain in my life. Anybody that's really on a high level that wouldn't tell you that, you know, they really haven't been through any kind of process in life. And they, don't, they didn't really learn much along the way, so they're really not very worthwhile uh, to help anybody. You know, let me tell you something about me where I am right now. I'm a great counselor. I have, I'm full of wisdom. I can look at things and see the practical side of things. I can counsel giants. I can counsel presidents. I can counsel prime ministers. I can counsel... Because they can ask me something and I can just see into the whole scenario and tell them I think this, I think, because it's in my mind. And I've tested it out lately. I, you know, people ask me questions and write me for counsel from all over the world, from nations all over the world. Several I got this week. And, and what I find myself writing them back, I say, this is the, this is the most practical wisdom, you know, for, for them that they might not even have thought of. So you have to have it in your head, yeah? And you have to also make a decision. Now, scripturally speaking, adversity is not our friend, it's our enemy. It's the adversary. Adversity, you get it? It comes from the word, the same word for adversary, adverse, which not mean, it's not like inverse or for you, it's something that's against you. If you allow something that's against you to plague you, you're, you are very weak spiritually and also mentally, and you have not yet made the decision you know, I heard, I heard some lady preaching yesterday, and I know her. She was in some conference in Uganda or somewhere. She's screaming about, you know, she's making these confessions like you're threatening somebody's life. You know, like if you don't obey this principle, you're going to. I said, whoa, sister, slow down. I said, I put up my hand. I said, I rebuked that in Jesus' name, and I clicked it off, clicked the X. Goodbye to you. Enjoy your conference. Don't be talking that stuff over me, you know saying something about a principle from the Bible, which is true. But then you don't take that and then go to the next statement and start saying, you're going to, you know, your life will be shortened if you don't obey this, or you're going to have a talk like, what the heck are you, a decreer of damnation? What are you talking about? People preach like that. So I said, I don't care if you've got a big name and you, you whatever. No, that's the wrong thing to say. Okay, let's balance that out. Let's smooth that over. Let's cancel that in the process. Because a lot of people have made a lot of mistakes. Why? Because they didn't have things right in their head and their heart. Does that mean life is over for them? No, it, something's just beginning. It's not ended yet. You know, it's not time to throw in the towel yet. You ever feel like that? You get to some, something happens and another thing happens and another thing happens and you're like, this is it. And you get this feeling of dread, like almost like your life is in the balance. You ever feel like that? Uh, some people would say, no, you're lucky, or you're, or you're somehow naive, or somehow you haven't been through enough yet, or you haven't stood on the edge of doing something so big that things could happen like that. But I tell you, I've, I've felt that a few times, you know. Not early in my life, never happened then, never felt like it then. Even if I was in real danger, I remember one time I was driving on the New Jersey Turnpike in my uh, Mercedes, and uh, uh, I, I decided to go to the office in a snowstorm, and it was a mistake. But me, I'm so driven, I just wanted to go. 
I thought no one will be around. I can get a lot of paperwork done. I get a lot of, you know, go through a lot of accounts and stuff like that. And I was in sales in the, in the real estate industry. And uh, boy, I shouldn't have went. And then I got on the highway and there was a slick of ice, you know. And the car lost control. And here comes a tractor trailer, an 18-wheeler was coming right at me. And I looked at it and I thought, hmm. You know, like your life flashes before your eyes. I mean, this was real. Uh, you ever see that in the movies? Or you see it in, you know, the video clips when they show people in fatal accidents and all that, when they track the trailer, hit the car. One was coming at me. And then so something happened. An angel of the Lord. The Lord showed me after I got saved. And I wasn't saved yet, so which was very bad. I wasn't saved yet. So it wouldn't have it wouldn't ended it well for me <laughs> in, in both ways. Life and death. And death and then after death. And God had a plan for me that hadn't even yet begun. So, you know, he was going to protect me somehow. And he did, and he sent an angel. He told me this after I got saved, which I got saved some few months later. A few months later, I got saved. Or was it within the next year, let's say, was when God came for me and I got born again, gloriously called to the ministry. The Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, you know, called, told me I, he called me as his prophet to the nations. All, all this happened, you know, after, afterwards. So the truck driver was coming straight at the side of my car. Had he hit from the front head on, I would have been no more. Not maybe. At that speed on the highway, 70, 80 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour, sliding on the ice. Car has no control, sliding sideways. It's, it's sheer ice in this very bad snowstorm. I should not have gone out of the house that day, but I pushed myself wrong, wrongfully so and did. Or maybe to the glory of God, God came to show himself strong in the midst of it anyway, but it'd be better if I hadn't embarked on that. So <clears throat> the, um, the truck driver turned, knew he was coming at me, and he knew it would be a deadly situation. So he turned the truck uh, over the median into the local lanes. We were in the express lanes. And the front of his truck was the, on that side, sliding sideways again. And my car, the Mercedes flying, and thank God, I say Mercedes all the time because there's, there's a reason why I'm saying that. Is the Mercedes have has steel panels in the doors all the way from the front to the back. Very thick and heavy car. It could take an impact on the side more than any other. You know, one of these little Toyotas or something like that, and a truck hits it, it would be... There would be nothing left. Be, you'd see the seat somewhere. The other seat would be somewhere else. The rest of the car, the engine would be over there. The, you know. So the Mercedes, it, it stayed intact even after the impact. So anyway, here, so here's what happened. So he goes sideways. And here I see the side of the tractor trailer coming toward me, getting closer, closer, closer. I looked at it. And I just went, ah. Boom. It hit. And it hit the side panel and the front wheel. The wheel, the wheel base and the, that metal thing that comes up took the impact. It bent the car in half, completely in half. Now the steering that was on the floor, the gear shift like this, was now going this way. <laughs> it bent so much that I couldn't push the gear anymore. The whole gearbox was smashed. You know? And I went like this. And it, it wouldn't move. And the car came to a stop on the side. The truck is all the way down there in the local lanes. The guy gets out of the car. He's a Spanish guy with a Spanish accent, a Hispanic guy. And he goes, man, man, you, you very, you very lucky. You very lucky. I looked at him and thought, <coughs> he said, if I, if I not turn this, this truck this way, you'd be dead. I was like, thank so what did I say? I just said I looked at him. I was in shock, you know. I just said, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then when I put my hands together like this, I rubbed and I felt something, and then I looked. 
the glass, the glass, the whole glass was shattered in the car. There was no glass left anyway. All the glass was gone. The roof was caved in. The side thing, everything was smashed. The windshield was gone. All the glass on the side of the window, side windows, back one, gone. So when I went like this, a piece of glass got in my hand. When I went like that, it made like a, a cut here. Yeah, and the blood was running on my left on my left hand. I thought. So later on, I remembered. I thought, what's the significance of that? And then I thought about the the of Jesus and the crucifixion. You know, like a sign. Then the Lord told me after I got saved. There's a lot of details and more to this, but I'll just close it up. On this. The, the Lord told me later on. I sent an angel to touch that truck driver to put it in his mind to turn away from your car, thus saving your life. I was like, what, what, what was I to say again? Thank you very much. I'm really glad you did that. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you had angels. I'm glad you have angels. I'm glad that, that guy didn't even know what he was doing. So what happened? He made a decision based on a supernatural influence, but he didn't even know, he didn't even know what was going on. I never saw the man again. You know, back in those days, this was a long time ago, my friend. This was, we didn't have cell phones in our hand. You know, what's your Instagram? You know, you know give me the QR code. What's your, what's your cell phone number? You know, we, we didn't have it. We didn't even have cell phone. I remember the first cell phone came out around that time, and it was as big as a, a like almost a, a whole brick, you know. I'll get Reese's. This is heavy. It wasn't this big. It wasn't this big. It was like, you know, it was like this, you know. You hold it like this, you know, and the antenna, you pull the antenna up. Hello. I saw a picture recently of the first cell phone. The first call that was ever made on a cell phone was made by a guy. He's a very famous guy because he, he was the first guy to ever make a cell call. But it was like this, you know, a thing like this. You hold it like this. And there were thousands of dollars. The first one that came out was $4,000. And this was like uh, 40 years ago? Yeah, about. Could you imagine? That was a lot of money then. 4,000 then was probably like $12,000 now. Could you imagine? So I, 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 I wouldn't know how to contact the guy. He just got in his truck and drove away. And sure enough, the car was there. I had to wait. I, had to, I don't know. I can't remember the rest. They towed the car. It was undrivable again. It was totally totaled. Finished. Completely finished. That was the last day of that car. That beautiful green, deep, deep green color with the beige colored uh, interior. Very thick seats. It was a very special edition Mercedes. Oh, we loved that car. Oh, and it was, that was the last day of that one. So, <laughs> how did I get home? I don't know where I went from there. They took me somewhere and they took me, I don't know, to make a, I don't know where, I, I can't remember. Anyway, I got back home. I was just, I just went to sleep. I was just in so much shock, you know. And then I had this, this cut in the middle of my left hand. Very interesting, yeah. And that was it. I think my knee hit the dashboard. I had some pain in my knee for a while. The whole dashboard collapsed like that, like, like an accordion, whoop, just broken pieces. And the gear shift was like now sideways. That car, that car was gone. And, uh, but, I was, but I was there and I'm still here. Praise the Lord. And that was a few minutes ago. So God is good like that. So what's the external, here's a, here's a moral of the story. What's the external force that's going to ha cause you to have victory? And I have to tell you this, it's not always waiting for God to say, well, uh, you, know, it, you know, if he wants it to happen, it's just going to happen. Yeah, if the Lord wanted you to, you know, go exercise, he would have just came and took you by the hand and took you to the gym. No, you got to get up and go yourself. Amen. If you're going to wear a certain outfit or whatever, you, you got to choose what you're going to wear. You want to eat certain food, you know. You want to fix your hair or go do something or go do something, you, 
You have to decide to get up and go do it. So here's, here's, here's the wisdom now, the wisdom of the Holy Ghost. Take the assessment in your life and look through everything that you're doing and say, what am I doing and what is it producing? I know this is painful. It's painful for me like it is for you. What am I doing and what is it producing? Do you know how many things we do on a daily basis? I'm talking about in our personal world. I'm not talking about like who you know or who you're hoping to talk to or who you're going to see next week or what you're going to do. I'm talking about you in your personal world, in your own mind and space where you are. In, in every single day of your life, what are, you, what are the things you're doing that are not producing anything? So you have to obviously reduce them and increase the ones that are more productive. And the Lord, the Lord had me say in the message, the money is coming, volume 66. I did that a couple of weeks ago. The 66, 66, number 66. The 66 message on the money is coming. And that's going to become a great book. And that whole series will be uh, available to watch one after the other. We're arranging it in order on another channel. So anyway, uh, the one thing the Lord said, in your life, you need to figure out how to monetize everything. I don't know why it's so important. You know, money, money is important. You know, somebody said, uh, a great motivational speaker once said, uh, someone said money is not the imp most important thing. You know, people like to trash money. He said, oh, yeah, but it's kind of up there with oxygen. You need both to live. You can't breathe. What happens? You know, you could even go without food. You could even go without water for some days. You can go without, without food for many days. You'll be skinnier, but you'll still be alive. But without oxygen, without air, able to breathe, it wouldn't last three minutes. Three minutes only. I have a friend that died, had a, his heart failed him. A preacher friend of mine, a preacher friend. And uh, he died for many minutes, and they resuscitated him back. He wasn't the same, because the, the, the oxygen level to the brain shut off for too many minutes. And he was gone. He was gone. He, he woke up again, but... He couldn't function. He was in a vegetative state. I saw him in the video. His wife was shooting the Facebook on him. I was like, stop it. Then my apostle friend, I talked to him, and then my apostle friend called him on the phone and said, hey, doctor. He was a doctor, you know, illustrious doctor, university. He had his own university. He had all this. So he says, doctor. And he said his other name. He said, just go be with the Lord. You know? Because we all assessed that it was he couldn't he couldn't recover. Just go be with the Lord. So on Sunday afternoon or whatever Sunday morning, whatever time it was, he'd normally be preaching. He went to heaven, and he was only sixty years old. Now some decisions I thought about that maybe he made in his diet and all that in his health that wasn't you know the best, and uh, the arteries got clogged up. So you had to have a surgery, and then they say there's a chance when they do the surgery, the bypass thing, that some, sometimes they don't work. He turned out to be one of the ones that it didn't work. Because some months later, he, he, his, the veins collapsed again. The ones that they transplanted and put as the, you know, the new veins in the heart. So what, what's the decision that could, someone said, well, that's a freak thing. Well, no, you got to take care of yourself. I saw a clip somewhere in the media, and I, I save all these clips, but now I have to have, I think I need to have a staff person just for that department to take all of my findings and then put them in some kind of workable order to impl actually do them. You ever see some, you go, wow, that's great. I'd like to get that. I'd like to order that. I'd like to use that. And this thing about these websites, these sites you can use to do things for yourself or your business owner. Well, you can collect all of them, but if you never act on any of them, how are they going to work for you? So I think I, I know for sure I need a person just to help me implement all those because I find so many things and I'm very, I have a very curious mind. I love to look at this stuff and I scroll through stuff and I see it and I have, I don't have hundreds. Let me tell you something. I have thousands. I'm sure it's thousands by now of, of uh, links of articles and stuff like that of brilliant things and many of them in the realm of health. I saw one that flushed the, Flush the bad cholesterol out of your arteries. I'm like, dude, that's one of the most important things you could ever see. 
I saw one I do an eye exercises. Like you look at something, you focus on something far away, and then you bring your hand, and you focus on like this, and you hold it for some seconds, and you go back like that. Who knew that you could do exercises with your eyes? Can you imagine? You, there's so many things that we don't know about. So let's say you're in the course of life, and you should have got involved with a business. You should have brought a, bought a property when you had cash. You should have invested in this, but then you didn't do it because you didn't take the action. Why? Why? Here it is, because you didn't know in your mind at that time. And I hate that. Let me tell you something. I hate it. I don't understand it. I don't know why. I complained to God. Said, yeah, there were people around. Like, I tried to embark on something, but they didn't want to help. They weren't interested. They were, what do you call these people? They're, two, they're two-faced, uh, two-faced friends, fake friends. Yeah, fake friends, very fake. You know, you're involved in something together, a common denominator of why you know each other. And for them, that's what it's all about, you know. But as far as you and them together doing something, they don't care. They care about themselves or they care about the guy. Let me tell you something about spiritual connection. You need, and the Lord's been dealing with me all this week about this. Many, many more partners are going to come in my, in my, in my wake, in my, in my, in my flow. You know, people tithing into this anointing, people sowing into this anointing, partnering with this anointing donating from far and near and far to projects we're, we're, we're doing and all that, you know? And you listening may be one of them. You may be, have been throwing your money in a dead pool. You may be sending, you might have been sending your tithes to somebody that, and then you look and you say, am I really getting a benefit out of this, you know? And I think in my young, wise self, that you should be connected with someone that can give you answers to things in life. Not just someone that you feel like is a connection, but you never know what you're getting out of it. I have a friend who's very wise. He connected with a man of God. The man of God is doing very well, and he followed his path. He followed his path, and he's, he's replicating actually what that senior man is doing. Because he does it by faith, he does it under the anointing, he listens to the voice of God. Everything we're doing in life has to be spirit-led. The other day I had a visitation about five days ago. And one of many, because it seems, it seems like I, every day I get something, something from, from the Lord. God speaks to me in some way or other. And uh, told me to pull my connection from one particular scenario and get involved in another one. And in the same breath, in the same sentence, without even, you know, maybe a comma, but without making even a new sentence, he told me what to believe for in the amount of workers and people and help and all that. I'm like, oh my God. Do you know what I did? Do you think I like shook my head and went, wow, oh, that's heavy, that's deep. Oh no, I within a millisecond, the way he didn't hesitate to put the second instruction in with the first as one sentence, I screamed out at God. I shouted the top of my lungs. Yes. Right now. Bring them right now. Let's do, let's do it right now. Let it all happen right now. And I said this passionately. I said, I don't care if I'm not ready. For certain things, I'll figure it out. Test me out. Send it. Let it happen. I'll try to handle it. I'll, I'll, I'll stretch myself to handle it. What am I doing by doing that? I'm embracing the blessing. Am I helping you yet? I know I am. Resign from adversity. Paul said, "Who bewitched you to believe something else? You." <laughs> you could say a few adjectives, right? You, <laughs> you, you, you. I know you wanted to say it, but he didn't. I know you wanted to talk about that, but he didn't. 
Hey, but it was from if he was from New York, he would have said a few extra embellishments. If he was in a New York state of mind, you know. Remember that song? I'm in a New York state of mind. I love that song. Billy Joel wrote that song. Wonderful song. And Frank Sinatra did the song, New York, New York. The city's so nice, they named it twice. New York, New York. If you can make it there, you make it anywhere. Then the line of the song says, it's up to you, New York, New York. It's up to you. My cup says, don't stress me out. Like a picture of a cat, meow, you get it? Meow, meow. See the cats? I like this cup. Resign from anything that's blocking your way. Who's the blocker in your way? Who's wasting your time? What's the opportunity cost? What is it costing you to be doing a certain activity that doesn't produce enough? Too much. I know. I've experienced it. You go to help people, they don't celebrate you, they don't appreciate it, they're crooks. Some people in the ministry, even in certain places, they're just bona fide criminals. They break the laws of God, they show dishonor, distrust, they're underhanded, undermining. I, went, I, 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 I could tell so many stories, I was just about to say, I went to one place, no, I'm going to stop myself. I don't, I don't want to go down that road, I want to stay in the positive vein here. But like if you keep dancing with fools, the song of your experience is going to be, thou, thou art also a fool. Now, let me give you the Bible for that. Proverbs 18 somewhere. I can't remember the exact verse. I think it's the 18th chapter. The wise walk with the wise and become wiser, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. The wise walk with the wiser, with the wise and become wiser. If you're wise, you'll walk with a wise person. You'll find a wise person and catch their wisdom and get into taking action by things that they're doing. You know, success is, is contagious. It can rub off on you. And there's a, there's a formula that all the motivational teachers say. And I love it. And it really came from the Bible anyway. So I was there first before I heard anybody talking about it in the, in the secular world or any arena, church world or wherever they are. Get away from broke people. I really offended a guy in London one time, some religious pastor. And it, the Lord gave me this statement. He said, run with winners and run away from losers. <laughs> Boy, he let me have it in the office afterwards. He said, well, does that mean like the compassion of Christ doesn't reach the down and out in the homeless man? I looked at him and rolled my eyes and said, oh, here we go. Jesus, where am I at? This guy. You, did, you totally misunderstood. I was talking a business principle to the people that want to become more successful. Your environment produces what it is. Any environment you, you partake of and get involved with will reproduce itself. If it's not a good one, you got to get out of it. And I, I could say, like, you chose it. No, if you chose it for a moment, or maybe by path of least resistance, it kind of just happened. Let's not concern ourselves like this other preacher was shouting, you know, threats at people, you know. And, you know if you don't do this, this is how it's going to end up for you. But don't make a statement and decree over God's people like that. That's, I'm not for that. I know what you're trying to say. The, the, the loving, beautiful way to say it as a, with a, as a real shepherd or a real apostle or prophet, if you whatever think, whatever you're flowing in or are supposed to be or purport to be, you know, say, this is a principle that you need to obey 
It has consequences if you don't, but I pray you'll start from today doing it right. Woo! What did I just do? Did I, did I throw something bad on somebody because they're breaking the law of God? No. I didn't. I don't want to do that. Let me tell you who, let me tell you who needs to get the, the destruction by the law of God and a, like a, a, a strong, fierce decree of judgment is those that are, have hurt people, those that have gone out of their way to do criminal acts to try to destroy people. Now, the Bible's full of the scriptures. Psalm 63, 9, which I've shared severally, and, and Isaiah 41, 11. Make a note of those two. 63, 9 of the psalm said, if you try to destroy a person, you'll go into the lower parts of the earth. That means hell. And you'll become also a portion for jackals, meaning the wild dogs will eat you. Remember Jezebel. Was she going to get blessed? What, was it for Elijah to say to Jezebel, oh, it's okay, dear, don't worry, calm down, you're having a bad day. Are you on your period, or did you drink too much uh, Kool-Aid, or what the heck is wrong with you today, you know? No, he tell her, you dog, you devil from hell. He said the dogs are going to eat your flesh by the wall of Jezreel. And his own, her own eunuchs threw her out the window. A eunuch, what is a eunuch? I, I don't want to get into it, but it's really bad. You know how a eunuch becomes a eunuch? And I'm thinking, who the heck, who the heck in their right mind could do that to someone? Like these people that want to circumcise girls, you know, the people in Africa that do that. I put the I put the judgment of God on you that you'll fall down and be scattered like fools like the wind. Be gone in Jesus' name and let that thing end in our day and never be done again to another person. In Jesus' name. Yeah, I said it. I don't care if you like it or you think you have a reason for it. You have no reason to alter the human body that God made it the way he made it. He put everything there for a reason, not for you to fool with it. Like these people in America lost their damn minds in Europe or wherever else they are to think, well, oh, I feel like a woman today. You know, I don't know. Maybe I should, you know, change things around. And, and that, you know, everyone that ever did that afterwards becomes a psycho. And they look down one day and go, oh, what was I thinking? You know, I saw, <laughs> I can't resist. I saw the funniest thing on the America's Got Talent or Britain's Got Talent, whichever one it is, with Simon and the others, you know. And these four ladies came up, yeah? You thought they were ladies. Everybody thought they were. Four, four they looked like women. They really did. And they pulled it off. I mean, the makeup and the hair, and they even took the hormones to grow, you know dresses on and all that and they came up singing the song you know and all of a sudden they went oh they changed it to the next verse it was like whoa like a man's voice is either it's demons or these are really and everybody went ah all the judges threw their hands back and screamed i was laughing i couldn't believe it and then they applauded them after that you know the world is crazy they just applaud them like oh yeah that was great you're all so talented okay girls thank you girls no, they weren't girls. <laughs> they were lady boys from the Philippines. <laughs> Where are you from? Philipp Philippines. I'm from the Philippines. I'm like, you people. Or, or maybe from the, some come from Thailand. Lord have mercy. Amen. So, you know. <laughs> so one of the judges said to them, Hey, did you forget to tell us something? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> the big secret. Yeah, 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 So where can I go from there? Somewhere good. Here we go. The purpose of a thing always has a good connotation in the realm of manifesting something good that God wants to do and give you. Always. Every part of the body, every thing that can be produced from your mind. The angel of the Lord standing right here. I just saw him right here. Hi, hello. Right here. There they are. He's standing right here. At the edge of my desk here. Thank you, Lord. Father, help us and help your people in Jesus' name. Let the things that they've suffered be gone from today. 
let them begin to re rearrange their mind and their schedules and everything based on you can help them and take all fear out of them that they don't feel ready or prepared to go into a big arena. When you go to successful and high-level people, you're going to get emotional. You're going to get emotionally damaged along the way. I might as well just tell you the truth. And, and it's a part of the process. And you can't shy away from it. Say, if I go there and they're so rich and so successful and so big and I'm kind of trying to attain, you say you're trying to attain something toward that level and you're not there yet, you're going to feel very foolish about yourself. You're going to feel ashamed. You're going to feel embarrassed. Your esteem is going to go through. Your emotions are going to go through issues. Let me tell you what to do. Push through that and go back a second time. And then go back a third time. And then go find more high-level people and change your environment. And get in the environment of greatness. Or find people that are already doing things you want to achieve. Find out, like this evangelist in America, he followed this other pastor and he saw what he was doing. And on high level, high level giving, high level life, high level obedience to God. And he started to follow his path. And he's, re he's reproducing and replicating the results that the senior man of God has. Why? Because he chose to do it. Why? He's he just like, I'm just going to hang around. I'll be part of the association. I'll go to the minister's conference and I'll maybe sign up to join. And I won't do anything and just hope it'll just like come to me. By accident. No, life doesn't work like that. You know. Everything good has a purpose to produce something good. Anything possible and available to you is to be worked with to help you achieve something great that you haven't had yet. And to do that, you need to change what it is you're doing on a daily basis and make the decision to resign from everything adverse. Let's lift our hands and, and thank the Lord for this. Because he's going to work on our behalf. He has to. But we have to choose the right things and make the right decisions and walk in the right way to get to what God has ordained us to get to. There's someone that has the answer for you and has it for me. I had a meeting earlier today. It was glorious. I didn't know it was going to be that good. I didn't know. I had a meeting the other day. Didn't know it was going to be that good. But it was. Didn't know I was going to step into a lot of other things that were spontaneous. They were there. So what, what was the choice that I had to make? Resign from nonsense. Part of the nonsense is staying in the place where you are all the time. Because you're just there. You only know what you do. You didn't learn anything new. As brilliant as you are, you have to find two things in, 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 in your walk every day. I don't want to say it's like a goal to achieve later. Let me just say it's an every day, seven day a week, 30, 30 or 31 days a month, 365 days a year, and 360 days every fourth year. Because there's an extra day. It's in February 29th. It becomes a an extra day or something like that in that, what they call the leap year and some people funny enough were born on that day and maybe they think they only have a birthday every four years so i guess when they're 80 they're only 20. ha 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 nice joke but it's not true anyway so the lord is is telling us you, you want to change everything you're doing make a decision every day to go after the bigger thing that you want what is it you want now you have to decide okay you have to look at and analyze things. What is it going to take for me to get there? What do I have to do? What do I actually have to do? Who do I have to call? Who do I have to pursue? What do I have to change about myself? What do I have to change about where I am in my schedule and all that? What do I have to do to get there? That's what I need to make my daily agenda from tomorrow. You may be seeing this broadcast in the evening or any time during the day. So if it's early enough in the day and you happen to stumble upon this as the time you're watching this, then it still can be today. But let's say it's later in the day. Say, okay, I'm going to think after hearing this now what I can write down, what I can plan for tomorrow. Who do I need to connect with? You know, I'm not, you see, I can't be a hypocrite like some preachers. I can never be. Hypocrite means actor. It's a Greek word. Hypo, 
hypo, hyped up, we get the word hype from that. You're hyping something. You're presenting something, you know, you're trying to pump people up to believe something, even if it's not true. And Christ is an uh, act, an actor. You're hyping up an act. Hypocrite is the word for like, uh, like you're false. Yeah? You're portraying yourself as one thing, but you're something else. But really it means a hyped up actor. You're an actor. Yeah, you're taking on a role to present something else. It's not even... I can't be like that. I'll tell you what's real. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I got a, a, in a meeting I had earlier today, I didn't tell anybody about it. It's not nobody's business anyway. It's mine. I went and did it. And it was powerful. It was glorious. Glorious. Absolutely glorious. And we got into this flow of like a lot of new connections of people. So one person got somebody on the phone, two, two or three people right away, and it's just as we were just right there on the spot. Johnny on the spot, man. Boom. Done. So I didn't wait like, oh, you know, you know this thing about, oh, let's meet next week. You African, whatever. Stop with the next week. Oh, let's see, let's see if we can get together next week. You idiot. How about today? How about tomorrow? When do you want to do it, prophet, doctor? We can have lunch on Monday or Wednesday. You, knowing me, you think I'm going to say Wednesday? I'm like, no, Monday. I don't care how I feel, what else I'm doing. I'll move things out of the way because you're, you're such, you're, you're such a, a divine uh, uh, person that I need to be with that I'm, I don't want to wait another extra day. I want to do it the first chance we get. And then even the fact that it got to that point is because of my follow-up. Let me tell you something. People that are busy, people that are like GMs and CEOs and heads of... We're busy people. You want something, you got to go after it. Like, well, they didn't call me and we didn't get to talk. And then, you know... And here's another regret I have I want to tell you about. Very painful. Some people you meet later and you left them alone for a long time. Whose fault was that? Can we go back and blame God? No, it was you. It was me. Did you see someone after so long and you shake your head and you go, we're friends. I just don't know why we waited. Like, where's the gap? Who made the gap? Sorry. Sorry, Lord. Sorry for the loss of time. Here's another thing I got to tell you. Whatever it is you're going toward, and you want to achieve, God has a way for it to happen, regardless of anybody's reaction or not. You could be with some people working on something, and then something goes awry, something goes south, something goes off. And then it's like uh, that person is not now. So there's 8 billion people on the earth. Am I going to sweat over one person? No, heck no, I can't. I resign from anything that's in my way. I don't care who, I don't care who it is. And I, and, I, and I don't also care who God uses to help me. One thing about God, you can tell him what you want, why you want it. The five W's, I call it. The five W's of wisdom. Wisdom is the master W, so it's six. Let's say, how do you do W? Like that, W. Double U. W is really double U. See the U? And you put them together and you get U. V, W, X, Y, Z. So the W is two U's put together. I like the letter because it's like you see there's two parts to it that come together. And this is power. This is deep what I'm saying. This is the Holy Ghost. I didn't think of this before. W. And W is the master for wisdom, right? And then there's five others I call it what, when, where, who, and why. What, when, where, who, and why under the master W, which is the thumb of the right hand, let's say. This is the, the master of wisdom, and it has five, you know, you can implement it and, and make it work through five different things. What, when, where, who, and why. Why you should know why you want something when you figured out what you want. And go to God and tell him and write it down. I really want this, so this is what I have to do to get it. Why? Because I need it. It's my destiny. It's my purpose. I have to get it. 
I have to, I have to fulfill destiny. Oh. Rasta <laughs> Kuratala, I feel I feel the touch of power, the power of the Holy Ghost on that. I have to fulfill destiny, so I have to push myself. Paul said, I discipline myself. I buffet my body, not buffet. Buffet is nice. I like the buffets, you know. But buffet, meaning discipline myself. I'm like an athlete. I'm like a military soldier in my training, Navy SEALs training, which is the worst I've ever. You, no one can, almost no one could pass that test. I, I wouldn't even think about it now in my young self. Even when I was young, I don't know if I want to do it. That what you have to go through to become a Navy SEAL. If you become a Navy SEAL in that elite group in the American military, you know the training you had to go through? You know the tests you had to get through, the torture physically, the physical endurance and strength of what to, to get to pass, to say you pass, you're qualified? Oh, it's almost impossible. It's like 9,999 out of 10,000 couldn't do it. And the few guys that did, they're elite humans. They're superhumans. What did they do? They wanted to be a Navy SEAL. They signed up for it. The Green Berets, they called them in the, in the Marines. They had another uh, very stringent uh, regiment to, to qualify and train for that. You know, Paul said, I'm like that. I'm like a Navy SEALs uh, entry, entrant, uh, uh, contestant, you know. I'm like an athlete. I want to be a master athlete. I have to work and discipline myself and work at what I, I want to achieve. First thing you need to do is resign from foolishness, any adversity. Get past it. Now work on the positive. So in the five W's, the master of wisdom would say, the master who's called wisdom, and the spirit of wisdom said in the book of Proverbs, I was with the Lord in the beginning. So really, is, is that, that denotes that he is uh, the spirit of truth and one with the Holy Spirit. The spirit of wisdom is part of, an attribute of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen to that? To lift your hand and say, Lord, fill me with your spirit of wisdom. Fill me with your spirit of knowledge, your spirit of understanding, your spirit of counsel, your spirit of might, which is physical endurance and power and energy and strength and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. A great uh, motivational speaker said he figured out when he was young the number one thing he needed was energy. He said, I have the passion, but I need the energy. I need the energy and the passion. And with those two things, I can achieve anything I want to achieve. Very true. You ever, you, you know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You heard that one? You know, or you say like, uh, I went to do this, but the devil, he, he, he buffeted, you know, he, he, he caused adversaries in the way, caused an obstacle. Remember Paul even said that? I was desiring to come to you, but the devil hindered the way. You remember that? You got to get past all that. Doesn't mean Paul never went. He went. He said, I couldn't get to you in the time we were allotted to come the first time because of the opposition. Remember, he was going on the, on the sea uh, somewhere and his ship broke apart. <laughs> he was shipwrecked <laughs> more than once. <laughs> the storm came to stop him from getting to the mission. But he was wild and on fire and fierce. Did he stop what he was doing? No. He even went to Rome and had his head taken off by Nero, I think, or whoever it was. And... Uh, you know, that was the end of him, but he had to go. He went all the way, even to his death. He, he didn't stop. Beaten with rods, that means they'd take, they hang you up with ropes and they'd break their feet with, break the bones of their feet with metal rods. You know, lovely. Paul even said, I have the marks of an apostle. What does it mean? Physical marks or spiritual? I don't know. I hope it's spiritual more than physical, but he, he had it all. He went through all of that. The things Paul went through. Oh, my God. But he didn't stop. Lift your hands right now. Say, Lord, give me this fierce tenacity inside of me to persevere through anything. And then now also to shift gears and to move 
in the direction of what you've ordained for me. That I start from today, tomorrow, right now. I'm not going to wait. In Jesus' name. And we're going to make it. And we're going to be very extraordinarily successful. Because of your hand, you're good at the good hand of God that's on us, like the Bible says. And uh, the favor of God is with us. Our prosperity comes from his favor, but it also comes by invoking it through our action, taking action. So some very high-level people, leaders of industries, I'm meeting with them. And I didn't want to put it off. I said, no, I'm going to do it right away. So I don't want to tell all my business. Definitely don't. And I won't. But uh, I've already scheduled it. I'm, I'm doing it. I already scheduled it. And then one person was bringing up uh, in, the converse, in a conversation, you know, mentioned about certain things that are the way they are. I said, no, I'm not, I'm not, here, I'm not here to talk about that. We're talking about the next thing now. What, where are the blanks? Where are the things going to be? The, the, the spot's going to be filled in for that. With who, when, now, where are they? So you have what? You, you need to know what you're doing, obviously. You need to know, you got to know why you're doing it. And then the when, you'd say, I want it now, if you're smart. And then the where, you have to get to the place where God's ordained for it to happen. There is a place where God has for you. He's ordained. Well, there is a particular place. Now, here's what you don't always know more than anything else. The mysterious W is like the owl. The owl says, who, 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 who. You know that that's the way they make sounds. Mysterious, like an owl. In Africa, you call them owls. I was in a meeting, someone said, some lady said, oh, oh, what are the preacher has, what are those birds that are really scary, you know, that people are scared of, you know, and I tell you, yeah, that's one. And the people go, owls. I said, you, you people are crazy. Owls, O-W-L-S. The pronunciation is owl, owl. Owl, not owl. Anyway, so I really had a laugh over that. The owls, yeah, and I looked at her and said, it, dear, it's owl. She went, oh, thank you, thank you, prophet. <laughs> thank you for helping me on that. Mysterious, who? You don't always know the who, but you can look around you and take assessment of who's with you now and assess what they're achieving and accomplishing and they're making a, an adjustment to say, no, this is not okay. You mean to say that I took all this amount of time and this is where we got to? No, that happened in your environment with the people that you're with. You need to change things around and go to a higher level. And just accept it and don't get mad too much. I mean, you'll feel mad for a while. Get over it. Get into peace, get into confidence, get into boldness. And get on with the real program. Let me tell you what gives you confidence is knowing that you're perceiving and seeing, not foreseeing only, but you're actually seeing in reality success for yourself. Things are starting to work. They're starting to move. They're starting to happen. In a great new way. It just gives you hope, you know. Confidence and boldness. You, you kind of, you kind of get like the brightness of the adversity becomes dim. And the brightness and the glory of the possibility and the successful outcome of what you want becomes real, more real to you. And one replaces the other. I'm teaching this thing here. Let me get to a scripture. Thank you, Jesus. Someone say thank you, Jesus. Wow. Someone say, wow. <laughs> this is dope. Jesus, I have mercy. So, to the well-beloved Gaius, who I love in the truth, this is the third epistle, third epistle of John. The third epistle of John. And these are so deep that they don't even have numbers on the pages. 
page 1514 in my New King James Bible. Page 1514 is the second epistle. Okay. Oh, it's even got a good number. 1515, page 1515. Page 1515 of my New King James Bible says as follows. The third epistle of John. Greetings to Gaius, the elder, to the well-beloved Gaius, who I love in the truth. Now, I looked at Gaius and I thought, how many people do Gaius do I know named Gaius? I only met one in Nigeria. And, you know, those people are really hyper-faith. They're really pumped up. The, mo the mother saw Gaius and she liked the third John too, so she named her kid Gaius. Gaius was like an Italian kind of name. And there's this Nigerian kid. What's your name? I said, look at me, Gaius. I said, what? Say it again, son. Gaius. Oh, like the Gaius in the Bible? He smiled big and went like this. I told her, your mother's, your mother. I told him, I said, your mother's a smart lady. She must have found that in the scripture in 3 John 2. You and he nodded and said, yes. So I said, this is for you, son, but it's not just for you. And I began to teach the whole church. Thousands of people in this conference were in attendance. And the Lord had me prophesy. And I was preached great messages on wealth creation. Those videos are available. And we will re-release them. If you ask for the ones, just write Nigeria Wealth. Nigeria Wealth Creation. Anything about those messages. And I'll, I'll show you how you can watch those messages. They're, they're available. Very powerful. And... Um, well, I need to make a book out of that, too. I need to make a book out of that conference. All the sessions that I spoke there. Anyway, another job for myself. Beloved, New King James says, I, I mean, King James says, I wish. New King James says, I pray. New International Version says, I desire. Above everything else, that you prosper in all things and be in health, good health, just as your soul prospers. This is New King James. Even as your soul prospers, King James said. Which meant, uh, I like even because it's like a measuring thing. Even. It's a comparison one to the other. Even as your soul prospers, so you'll prosper. Pro in, financially, in finances and material things, financially and also in your health. This came up in a discussion about this great man of God who looks very super young, and he's not that young. In fact, he's in his 60s. And he's very energetic. And he was talking about, you know, his diet and then how, tell people what not, the things you shouldn't eat and all that and how he keeps himself. And he said, how could I be here with so much energy preaching to you? And this guy has energy. I mean, he really does. He's in church all the time. He preaches somewhere every day. His schedule like, is off the chain. And he's going like a young man in his, you know, in, at the age that he is. He says, so I take care of myself. This is how I do it. And he gave some advice on things you should eat, cut out of your diet, take care of yourself. Very good message. That's part of the gospel. And I, I want to do more of that. I want to have, health, I'm going to have, I'm not, I want to, I am going to have. Health practitioners uh, who are brilliant experts and great communicators come on and begin to teach people about the things of health. I have so much research of, of, of things I've looked in, into on that, and I want to implement all of them. I mean, do a whole thing about all the supplementation, what you can take for this, what's good for that, and just have it as a whole course, as part of my curriculum in my school of success. Wouldn't that be great? Would you tune in for that? <laughs> you'd, you'd learn... You learn how to take care of yourself and live a long time. I, I saw a guy make a statement this week. I was pretty shocked. I hope it's true, but it, it seems like he's onto something. For sure. He definitely is onto something. He said, if you do this regularly, you'll add seven years to your life. I thought, really? I want to do it. 
I don't want to just do it once. I want to do it regular, regularly. We'll get more into that. So many thoughts on that. So he said, John said, now, God, I pray because God wants you to be prospering and he wants you to be in good health and he wants your soul to prosper and he wants your life to go according to how, how greatly you're also thinking. Then the next verse is very profound. He said, I heard of the truth that is in you and I rejoice greatly about it that you walk in the truth. The truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth, for I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. This is God talking through his beloved Apostle John. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Page 1515 in the New King James Bible. 3 John 2, verses 2 to 4. Verses 1 to 4. And John 8, 32 says, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Let me tell you something else. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 4 quickly. This is, I'm going to jump right in the middle of it. I'm not going to uh, give the whole premise of it. But this is where the devil came to tempt Jesus when he was in the wilderness. And here's something he said. If you're the son of God, then throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will give your, his angels charge over you to keep you, and that they're, they're, and in their hands they shall bear you up or hold you up or catch you or whatever, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You won't hurt yourself. Jump off this cliff, because the angels will come and get you. This is the devil, the stupid Lucifer, who became a corrupted, evil criminal. Judge for forever, death sentence forever, can never be overturned. What a fool. The biggest fool that ever lived was, was Lucifer himself. Hmm? So, but, but he was mocking Jesus and mocking the angels and mocking God. Try to say it in a very funny, twisted, sarcastic way. But look at what he actually said. He will give his angels charge over you. Stop right there. They'll catch you in there with their hands and they'll hold you up that you don't crash or, or get hurt in any way. You see that? Why would Lucifer, why would the devil, now Satan, actually say that? Because it's true. Do we believe God like that? Lord, you're going to rescue me. Lord, I don't, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know how everything's going to work out and through whom or what exact moment. Or, but I want you to do it suddenly. And I'm, I'm pushing with my expectation to say that this, this that the thing that I'm this believing and desiring, I have to have it right now. The devil told him, the angels will take care of you. <laughs> One of my angels is standing right here. I saw, how, how, it's a prophet, you say, how do you know? I see them. I, they, they appear in a, a kind of a part of their physical expression. I can see it when they're there. They, and he's right here, standing right here. I don't know what's wrong with us. The supernatural happens at times, you know, like this, and, and it happens, and we still don't dive into it enough. Even myself, I want to challenge myself to dive into it more. Let's begin to pray right now. Konshalasana. I want to read a couple of testimonies. Let's see if I'll get to it or well, maybe, maybe I will. Or I'll. Let's see. But uh, the Lord wants us to understand and we need to get into it. So, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' holy name, by the power of the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, you yourself, work with your angels to work on our behalf. Go and cause the money that we need to come into our hands. Touch people. Like you caused that truck driver to turn away from me when that uh, uh, unbelievable event happened, when that year that it happened, that was in 1985. 1985. 
that was. Yes. And saved my life and spared my life. And then in 1986, I got saved. Gloriously called to the ministry. Was not born again at the time. And yet you sent an angel that to what you were watching over me my entire life. In fact, all of any adverse situation, any place I ever was my entire life, from when I was born until I was born again uh, in 1986, and, and then after that till now and forevermore, your angels have assignment to watch over us. But why aren't we more conscious of them? Why aren't we telling, you know, out of our mouth, the instructions of things we want to see happen. We need to work this thing. I know one man, a guy became a multimillionaire, one of the biggest churches in Europe, I think, if not the, and a man from Nigeria, a really tremendous man of God. And I know him personally. And, uh, but I found he, in his library, I saw these three volumes of books that he wrote. He had his name, he has a very long Nigerian name. And he had it on the side of the spine of the book. And I looked and thought, I pulled it out. It was so heavy. It's like, holding this thing man this thing is heavy man it, it looks small but it's 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 a very uh this is a super base jbl one of the best in the world best in the world speakers here this is powerful you turn this thing on you could light a whole room you can almost light a small neighborhood with this if you crank it up and it's so powerful very heavy but uh the book was like that thick and each volume had five thousand statements of confessions in it and he had three of them so that means 15,000 confessions and then he did an audio series on it where he read them you know his accent and some of them were a little bit you know not as provocative or tantalizing as others and you just had to go through it and you make these confessions look at a man like Kenneth Hagin look at the men of faith like uh, the word of faith Kenneth Hagin Kenneth Copeland speaking and confessing and saying things, you know? And, and what do those things do? They actually become physical, tangible things. They become real because you worked in it, the realm to speak it. And then the realm of things that God wants to do, he has his prophets like myself in the office of the prophet. And he, he said, surely I'll do nothing unless I first reveal my secret to my servant, the prophet. And then it goes on to say in the second part of the eighth verse, the Lord has spoken, who then can but prophesy? In other words, the voice speaks, people are then uh, called forth to echo the voice. Are we doing all of that? Speaking things into existence. Even the praisers, I was talking about this a little bit last week. Pray, and I didn't get fully uh, through it all, but maybe I'll have a part two to that message. Breakthrough comes on the wings of praise. That was the title of it. That was part one, volume one. Maybe I'll do another volume on that. As the Spirit wills, as the Spirit leads. Let's see, let's see if he does. If he does, fine. If he, you know, whatever the Lord wants to say every day is okay with me. And that's, that's the way I flow. That's the way we roll. I mean, we are just saying what God is telling us to say. And the Lord spoke to me. Uh, these three words, resign from adversity. We make the decision to do that. And uh, all of these things that God has, we need to work with them to speak them out. So the praises were sent first. Judah, send Judah first. You know the scripture that says that? Why? Because the praise was, was confusing the devil, breaking the powers of darkness. Even Psalm 149 and 150 says, you'll put your foot on the, on the neck of the adversary. Amen. You'll, you'll bind their nobles with fetters of iron and their kings with with uh, with irons you know you'll bind them through your praise so it has some part to it on the phone one of these services came up with from a, a man that i respect but of course he's in the environment and uh he's he's not from he's not from the particular country uh, he's from another neighboring country, but, you know, he's in the environment, then all the people do the song the way they do, and here's the worship leader lady. And the others come behind. I'm like, so I made a comment to my friend. I said, no, this one. I said, I don't like that music. I don't like it. I don't feel any anointing. It's cultural. It's the way one copies the other. They sing it the way the other one sings, you know. 
They all do the same thing. I'm not saying it's bad. It's not bad. It's in church. They're dressed nicely. They're singing to the Lord. Their hearts are beautiful. Amen. They're there, but the, the way that they bring the expression is some, by some way they learned in the environment they're in. But what if you got dipped in like Kent Henry and Terry McCallman and Ron Cannoli and you say, well, those couple of white guys, you know, I can't flow like that. No, then flow like Ron Cannoli. He's a black man, African-American. Flow like Alvin Slaughter, who's a, also uh, a man I personally know. And uh, I prayed for him to lose weight, and he finally did. I think he lost some. Something funny happened with him, something adverse. I don't know if the one of his wife, something happened with him. I have to see if I can talk to him again. Some of these guys are hard to reach, you know. And the people that owned the house that he bought in Westchester, New York, beautiful mansion, million, million, multi-million dollar home. The people that uh, sold him the house, used to own it, were two friends of mine. I also lost touch with them. You see what I mean? Father, I got to say it because it's like it doesn't have, you, you always have this futuristic gaze like, you know, this is something I want to do. You, did, you don't even write it down. You don't even do it again. You don't remember it all the time. You think you're going to remember it because you sang it. I, I'm glad this is recorded and I can have a transcript of this so I can maybe highlight this note that I'm saying right now. I should think I should just grab my phone and maybe I should. Like my government friend in Kenya says, true again in actual fact. That's what he says. True again in actual fact. You know, yeah, by the way. <laughs> I'm writing some of the messages. So I pick up the phone, I start getting on. Someone wrote me, they were supposed to uh, meet me for a meeting, and they wrote back, they said they can't do it, whatever, so I, so I did, did something terrible. I deleted, I deleted the whole conversation <laughs> that we had had. So they wrote back now, question mark, question mark. They're all flipped out, you know. So I have to recreate the, you know. And I thought, well, you didn't make that one. So meeting can't, meeting adjourned. So I'll give you the next update of where it is. Let me, let me cancel this one. Uh, uh, it's too funny. What did I say I was going to do? I was, I'm, I'm making a note for myself. Pam prastan deve shakala ateso kochi andomo. Find those people from New York, Alvin Slaughter and uh, the other couple, Phyllis and her husband. I can't remember his name right now. And several other people that we lost touch with over the years. Father, in Jesus' name, help us find them. Amen. Leads to my, I just wanted to make a note for myself. Now, leading that in the way of prayer, let's pray. There are people that you knew, that you lost touch with, let them resurface somehow, even if supernaturally. Now, maybe they'll see you on Facebook and pop up and say hi, and you, you lost touch. It's a divine connection, a divine link. There's things that you can do together. And, you know, this is... Uh, I'm a how-to preacher, teacher. I love it because you see the whole message here. I'm giving you ways of getting ahead in your life. The premise being resign from adversity because you choose it. You choose or you lose. You choose or you win. If you choose to do something else instead of what you've been doing that's not producing enough or it's a bad scene, you're going to win. But you have to choose to break out of where you've been. You have to choose it. Guess what? Here's a secret. God, even God, won't do it for you. You just wonder, God, can you fix this for me? Can you just make it right? Can you just, like, do everything for me and help? It, it, it doesn't happen like that. He helps. He assists. He brings opportunities. He brings the miraculous. And we need all of that. I mean, a lot. I mean, I could just stop there and say amen to that. Let's keep talking about that. We need, we need all of that. But there's things we need to do and choose to do.
So go after the higher level thing. There's something in economics called opportunity cost. What you're doing now gets you a certain benefit. What you could have been doing with the same time on a higher level will get you a higher benefit. The higher benefit, subtracted, subtract the lower benefit from the higher benefit, draw a line, write the difference. That's your opportunity cost in economics. That's a rule of economics. Opportunity cost. What you could have been doing on a higher level, what it would have produced, minus what you're doing now on the lower level and what it produced, and subtract one from the other, and you'll be surprised. There's a big difference there. There's a big sum. If you can quantify it monetarily, you, you'd, really, you'd really get upset. It's up to us. And the clock is ticking, and Jesus said, what? The days are evil, so redeem the time. He said, what? Occupy until I come. Until I come. He hasn't come yet. If he came tonight, I would gladly go anytime he comes. There's a special blessing in those who love his appearing. You know, the scripture says that. The re very end of Revelation says, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. The Spirit of the Bride said, come. Maranatha, meaning come. I love, to those who love his appearing, there's a blessing. So we always have to think like that. Plan like he's not coming for a hundred years, but live like he's coming tonight. Or right now, or in the next five minutes. Or in the twinkling, twinkling of an eye, and we just go. Never go into a bad place. You shouldn't even fear departing the life, because you're saved, you're going to glory. It's all good. It's all win-win, but we have a lot to do now. So is everything left up to God? He had it all planned for everything to be done in great ways already. Hmm? Yes or yes? Yes. But is everything that he's planned done? No. No or no. No. Because people have not done enough to work with it to make it happen. I used to have a statement I used to make years ago. I need to bring it back. I think I said it on one of my voicemails, one of my US, you know, one of my USA phone lines. Make it a great day. Here's what I said. To be remembered, you have to do something memorable. So do it. Leave your telephone number and a detailed message that's meaningful. And I look forward to talking with you when we can. You make it a great day. Isn't that powerful? Another one to be. To be unforgotten, you must do something unforgettable. So do it! Thank you, Lord. Yes. I'll say it. Oh, yes. This is good. Here's some teaching grace and counsel for you. Always try to make your presence somewhere a good experience for people. Now, you can't do it all the time because you could be having a real bad moment every once in a while. It's okay. We're human. I'm not uh, uh, endorsing you know, you being in a bad mood or having a bad attitude or being angry or annoyed or irritated. You haven't blessed everybody you've ever been in the company of, myself included. Father, forgive us. Help us. We're human. You know, I, I, I saw this little thing. It's like a, a bean bag. You know, they, someone made this creation. How clever. A bean bag. You know, it's got beans in it. And it's like fabric with eyes and a face, mouth, nose, you know. Really cute. And the thing tied on the top, and they made it like a little tuft of hair on the top. That's where the, the thing is tied. You can hold it like that and shake it, or you can hold it like this. You can, you can squish it, move it around, shake it. It makes noise. The beans inside rattle. And you could throw it, and you could play catch with it. You know, it's, And on the front of it, I had this 
just made a creation with a very funny expression on the face with the eyes, the way they put the mouth and the nose, and it had a saying written on the bottom. Be nice to me. I'm a human being. <laughs> I was like, no, they didn't. Be nice to me. I'm a human being. Being, you know? You get it? Beanbag. They made this creation of little uh, stuffed animals called Beanie Babies. Made billions of dollars. Cabbage Patch Kids, which they said was some satanic. You know, they, some people thought it was evil, you know. Way back. That, those are gone. They're gone. I don't know. They were saying weird things happened to kids when they bought them. You don't know if some occult. <laughs> you know, there was a lot, of, a lot of things being thrown around. But there was a craze over those things. You wonder if it was demonic. Maybe the people that did it were into some sorcery and they tried to do it. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But these are some things that were said. And one of the person who owned the Beanie Babies company became connected with a friend of mine's ministry. And we actually met them and saw them. And they made millions of dollars. They claimed that they had sown a special seed into the anointing that was, you know, tangibly manifested and it produced this business blessing. I want to say that to you. This is real. I forgot to do something at the beginning because I was so caught up in the thought of, of the teaching and the message, but I wanted to say this from the beginning. You partners, people that uh, should be tithing here, giving here, sowing seed into this grace, do it. The ways to do it will be on the screen. Right now, we'll put the uh, uh, ways to sow into the ministry on the screen. By M-Pesa, by Sendway, by Cash App, by PayPal. And you could become a partner if you have a tithe or you have something special. You've come into some blessing and the Lord says, you know what? My prophet has been a blessing to you. You've really, you know, been blessed under his anointing. This anointing that I put upon his ministry in life. And uh, I, I want to sow into that grace. Do it for yourself. Don't just don't take the posture of saying, well, I should give because it's a good thing to give. That's good because the Bible says it's better to give than to receive. Because if you give, you then will receive. But when you're sowing seed, do it and you're tithing. Do it for yourself. For the promise out of Malachi uh, 3, 8 to, 10, 8 to 12, especially from the 10th verse, says, bring all the tithes in the storehouse that there'll be meat in my house. And prove me now here with saith the Lord of hosts. See if I'm not... Uh, open up the windows of heaven to pour you out a blessing. There's not room enough to receive it. And I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. And I'll make you even a delightsome land for me, says the Lord of hosts. Wow. I'll bless you so much you won't have enough room to receive it. Why? But you have to tap the right grace. You don't want to just throw your money anywhere. And many people, the Lord spoke to me. I'm telling you, the Lord spoke to me this week. Many people are coming to work for me, with me, in the, in the, in the ministry, in the vision, worldwide. And many people are going to become partners. Many more people tithing into this grace. Somebody made this observation. Uh, we were in a meeting and someone made this observation. Said, I thought, somebody that's just there that has a big church, it doesn't even know. You don't even know the pastor, the apostle. You won't even know them. And then, and they said, yeah, and they, they looked at me and they said, yeah, you're here on the ground, you're doing all the work, blessing people, helping people. But yet, some people would take their tithe, I'm talking to certain people right now, and send it to someone overseas, or send it to someone that they admire, their ministry, or just send it to a church that they're not even really, they really don't even know, you know, what's becoming of it all. Why not take that and pray again and say, Lord, do you want me to support Thomas Matthew IV? Do you want me to connect with the grace that's on his life? The Lord is going to say a big yes to a lot of people to do that. And he'll even put the thought in your mind to help you to bless this anointing and to bless yourself by doing it. And I say it again, big disclaimer, do it for yourself. Everything you do when you give, it's a, tr it's a business transaction you're doing for yourself. Hmm? Wow. Father, we thank you. As I hear you, 
uh, uh, responding. And as I see your names and your seats coming, the MPESA lines are on the screen. Uh, 706-164-191. That's the Kenyan number for MPESA. There's another one that some people that know me, maybe they were using that one. Let me give it again because I kind of have put out the 706 number, which is, our, which is my ministry number. It's registered to us and all that. It's very uh, safest way to sow. But uh, the other one is 792-320-780. If you already have that number and you'd rather use that, then do that. Either one is good. Plus 254-792-320-780. Or seven, uh, two, plus 254-706-164-191. PayPal, there's a PayPal page, dot, paypal.me, paypal.me forward sign Thomas Manton. Cash app in America. That application is cash.me, cash.me forward sign dollar sign dr thomas manton they're on the screen put them up again put them on again give people a, ch a minute to be able to sew because i believe that god's going to give you a breakthrough as you do in jesus name all right before we go let me get to one or two testimonies I have been following, <clears throat> let me show you where this is. This is in one of my books. Which book is this? Oh, this is the office, the book on the office of the prophet, which we're going to go into reproduction on this also. Here's the one, well, the actual cover. This is going to be put into reprint in some days, and I don't think I'm going to change anything in it. Some other ones I'm revising. Uh, the Laws of Success will be coming out, the new edition, right here. And um, the Benefits of Excellence is already done. It's good. It, they, they're also available in ebook. We'll print more of these. These are all sold out, but we're going to do more. And this one, a very, very interesting and unique book, uh, 66 Prophecies to the Nation of Kenya, all 66 have either come to pass or they're in motion. And when I read through them, I almost began to weep because it seems like they all apply to me and my work and my life and my organization, and as well as for the nation. It's really like double entendre, supernatural. I mean, just multifaceted. This book is just about done. I, fact, I think we're going to do the final uh, tweak on it in the next day or two, and this will be available Okay, wow. Now, in the front of um, the inside of Prophetic Keys to Success, uh, no, excuse me, Supernatural Operations of Spiritual Conquest through the Office of the Prophet. Here it is. Okay, this is the same book. I just got another copy when I'm right. I went right to the testimony. Without the cover, I'm very unique and help me love. <laughs> so, you see this here? This is our meeting. This is my Sunday meeting right here. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. Close. That's my Sunday meeting. And here's a testimony that somebody wrote. Packed house. You see that? Like a thousand, there's about a thousand people there. A thousand people in the congregation. Oh, yeah. And uh, I've been following Dr. Manton's ministry for some time. In that, I can testify that he is a true prophet in whatever occasion, whether he prophesies to individuals, nations, or the body of Christ, he records the prophecies. He's not a vague prophet. And most prophetic words through him are, are, are very, you know, what can we say? Uniquely creative, and we've seen them fulfilled. In fact, he's one of the major prophets of this time who is extraordinarily accurate. He also greatly desires to see the church rising up. He is unique. 
Thank you, whoever wrote this. Oh, this is by BN, uh, initials BN. That's the way we, we always put them. We keep the privacy of the names of the individual. And now I have to go back and try to figure out who this really was. Okay, anyway. So BN from Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, he greatly desires the church to, to see the church rise up. He's unique. I'm skipping a little bit of it here. Elijah the prophet in the Bible came out. Where did he come from? He came, he came and seemingly appeared from no, out of nowhere. But he had evidently been with God and he was sent from, he was sent by God. He came from God. And Dr. Manton is not one of those who prophesies merely about houses and cars to people. <laughs> Okay, nor does he fail to record his messages like so many others, perhaps because they are not even sure of their own prophetic, supposedly, supposed prophetic words. Such can go back later and to rephrase what they actually had supposedly prophesied. Interesting observation. I am one who has a testimony of blessings that came upon me through this ministry, the ministry of Dr. Thomas Matthew IV. And it didn't only come through personal prophecy alone, but God himself was working, uh, uh, coming toward me and through me, working through me in greater ways as a result of being connected to Dr. Manton's ministry. Thank you and God bless you. B.N. Nairobi, Kenya. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, I have... A couple of others. Let me do it while I'm on it. Great testimonies about this great ministry. Here we go. Dr. Thomas Manton IV, you are my favorite prophet in the whole world. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? I love you for your prophecies. I believe so much in them. <laughs> Yeesh. That hits you right straight ahead. G.K. Nairobi. Initials GK. Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you very much. I want to read it again. Dr. Thomas Matthew Ford, you are my favorite prophet in the whole world. I love you for your prophecies. I believe so much in them. Boy, that's so beautiful. Prophet of God. Next one. I was shocked and amazed when I came across your prophecies about Kenya's road developments while reading your book. Yeah, because some of it's in the, 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 these books. One, the one I mentioned and others, there's this. And I have another book coming out. Wow, look at this now. This is just a, co a compilation of a few and it's very thick, but this is just not even much. Of a few of the prophecies over the nation, we're, we're compiling them all together and putting, putting them into a, a, a book just on prophecies to Kenya. And this one I mentioned to you that's coming out uh, again. Where has it run off to? I have so many. I have about 10 books that I've written here now. Uh... Yeah, this one. It's not this one. This is a different one. Okay, this is 66 of its own, and these are the, these are the others. And then I have another book that I'm writing right now of what I preached uh, in the last year at the great Archbishop Harrison Nanga's ministry. And all of you know and love him. He's got the biggest church in Kenya. Uh, more than anyone else, the biggest mega church in Kenya. Archbishop Harrison K. Nanga, and he uh, had me speak for him nine times, nine times last year. Uh, in a year's time, can, in less than a year's time. Can you imagine? Let me think of the months. November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. Yeah, I think in nine months, nine times, which is very appropriate in, in numerical reality. 
So all of the prophetic messages to the church, to him, to his church, to the body of Christ, to the nation of Kenya, all compiled together and worldwide empowerment messages that were prophetic from the heart and mind of God are going into a book. It's, it's a book that's never been written. Who could take a series of prophecies and messages of what they've done and turn it into a book that's also going to be released to the whole world and it's meaningful to everyone? There's personal, there's corporate, there's, na- there's societal, there's national, international, and worldwide messages of revelation in there that are appropriate to everybody. Another book I wrote, and it's, we're just uh, working on getting that done. Another book, The Focus Factor. This will be, we're sold out of this. We're going to be doing a reprint of this. Amen. The Benefits of Excellence is another one. Another book that I need to write, and I found this uh, series here that I did some time ago called Breaking the Back of Lack. This, you see that what I did here, I said, give me people standing on top of money but they're tied up and they can't access it. So funny enough, this illustrator, it's a very strange graphic, a a pile of gold down here and then elevated like stacks of $100 bills, like a platform, and this couple is standing upon it with a briefcase dressed in business suits, but there's rope around them. (laughs) It's what I described to someone and they actually did it. And like they can't, they can't, they can't reach down to access it. They're, like this, they're in a spirit of lack when something is there for them, you see? And this is, this is what happens to, to a lot of people in the body of Christ. They say, yeah, God has promised us wealth, but we don't, we don't have it yet. That's not right. It needs to, there's something, it needs to, the transpiration, the transportation, the transmutation, the transition from where you are now into the place of having it needs to happen. And glory be to God, this is uh, a great series that I did. I'm also, and I think uh, these are available on audio. We can reproduce them on audio, you know, old school audio. Because when I preached them, they were recorded on audio, not video, for whatever reason. And these were done in three different cities in America. They were done, it was done in Chicago, New York City, and... The last one was in Florida in the Great Revival, three states of America. And there's another bonus one in there I saw was a message on the power to get wealth. That might be one that I did in New Jersey in the Great Cathedral. So this was uh, all across America. And uh, I want to make this into a book. What a title, Breaking the Back of Lack. What a phenomenal revelation. And these messages are riveting. So people that can get tuned into audio, uh, which everybody should, and I'll also put it in book form. You can get those. Can you say a big amen? Now, this book is available now in print that everybody can get, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living, and a great testimony by the Archbishop himself, Archbishop Harrison K. Nanga, wrote three pages about the glory of our ministry, the prophetic grace, and how God used me to uh, you know, do so many things to help change the world and the societies we're living in. To, to God be all the glory. I may get to that in a second. Let me read one more. I, this person was saying, I was shocked. Oh, let me finish this one. Let me finish this. I was shocked and amazed to see what you said about road developments in Kenya. And I know that God will also use you. He said, he said, it made me put a lot of confirmation on you and your integrity to see them the things actually happen that you had prophesied about, basically, this person was saying. This is from A.K. Nairobi, Kenya. He said, I know the Lord will empower you yet even more with his own glory to impact the nations with his word. Amen. In Je- and next one, Pastor J.A. from Mombasa, Kenya. From Mombasa, Kenya, Pastor J.A. Those are his initials. In Genesis 38, 29, Perez broke forth unexpectedly. Servant of God, Dr. Thomas Matthew IV, what you never expected will happen for you. Unexpected breakthroughs, miracles, and help are all coming your way now in this new shifting. Blessings and breakthroughs are all coming to you now in greater ways and measures. So be it. I can hear those self-proclaimed midwives and jokers 
asking this, how did Thomas Manton IV succeed so greatly? <laughs> ay, 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 There's a deep truth in that. Here's another one. This is a good one. I, I think this also can apply to some people that find themselves in debt and you're oppressed by things like that. God can give you a favor in the midst of you getting out of debt to give you favor with people. I speak that right now as a blessing. Anybody that's harassing you over money or you owe money to, or you have a debt needs to be paid and it's an, it's a, it's an obstructive, adverse situation, I speak grace and fire to come to the people that they won't harass you. They'll just say, it's okay. It's okay. Either maybe they can forgive the debt, or if not, it's something that's bona fide you have to pay. You'll have the grace to do it. And that God will also more so give you the provision to pay every bill that you have. Lift your hands and say, I receive that right now. Everything I need for his provision to work through in and through my life, everything, every obligation I have, every expense I have, every debt I have, and every debtor, if I'm in any situation like that, everything's being favored brought into my favor, and especially more than anything, that I will have the money to take care of everything that I need and want, in Jesus' name. And this person wrote a testimony. They said, pa Pastor Manton, thank you for your prayers. I managed to put a signed agreement, get a signed agreement from the directors of whatever, who, a company, the people they were in debt to, uh, evidently, giving me more time to pay the monies that uh, are, are owed to them. And this is a great miracle of God's favor because the mean-spirited branch manager that was bothering me got overruled. <laughs> God can do that for you also. Say amen. And, and after you prayed for me, I went back to see them. This lady manager was totally different and subdued this time when I met with her again. She changed and was completely unlike the person she was the previous week when she unleashed fire on me Praise be to God for the miracle, and thank you again, GM, Nairobi, Kenya. And this is a, a great outdoor crusade that we did. I don't know if you can see that, uh, with multitudes behind me. In fact, they put like a yellow background on the top of the graphics artist to match my jacket, my yellow jacket with my uh, leopard-spotted tailor-made shirt there. And the suit was also custom-made, yeah, and... Uh, See all the people, they, they blurred out the top part, really, but there was thousands more people. This is my Facebook page. You can see us there and come online. And uh, the Lord, uh, it was just amazing. And I got to say, the latter house will be greater than the former house. Can you say amen? Uh, greater days are coming. Let me read one thing that the Archbishop wrote as his forward for my great book, Prophetic Keys of Successful Living. You can get a hold of this. Keep sowing. I, I want to see people sowing. I want to see your response and your seeds coming through. Use the information on the screen and the numbers I spoke to you a while ago. And uh, PayPal and M-Pesa are great. You can sow that way. They're instantaneous and quick to get through. PayPal.me forward sign Thomas Manton and the M-Pesa number, 0706-164191. He said, I'm, I'm going to abbreviate because there's a lot that he said. Uh, oh, well, let me go back a little bit. Top of the list of the prophetic voices that God has raised up in our time is Dr. Thomas Manton IV. These are the words of Archbishop Harrison Nunga. See his name there at the bottom? And he signed it here at the end of this. This is the foreword in the book written by him. And uh, he even helped me to publish it because he loved me so much. That was a very kind gift of him, from him. He said... Um, Thomas Matthew IV, the author of this book, uh, the book that you're about to read. And he said, God has used his servant to invade cities and nations of the world under the prophetic anointing as an 
accurate and articulate prophetic voice during this last hour that is just beyond astounding. Now, closer to home, Dr. Manton has, with the precision of a skilled warrior and in diverse and unusually close presidential election cycles, etc., dispensed accurate prophetic messages that have gone a long way to ease tensions across Kenya and empower the church to intercede from a point of knowledge. Hence, settling down to read this book, and he went on to say how great it'll be for you to read the book. And uh, uh, glory to God. He wrote at the end, I've fought the good fight. I've kept the faith. Oh, yes. This is what a purpose-driven life entails and the requisite disciplines inked throughout the pages of this book that'll teach you how to live an overcoming life. You need to get a copy of this. Also available in e-format around the world if you'd like to get it. Just write me a message anywhere, DM or whatever, with the words book, B-O-O-K, and we'll get back to you on how you can get them and how we can serve you with the revelation that God's had me pen inside the great pages of this great book. Amen. Father, thank you for the touch that's beyond our understanding, a breakthrough right now. We resign from all adversity. Any person that's a fool, we've discovered, we've discovered the same, though how unfortunate it may be in the loss that would, may have been so great or was. We're not going to uh, uh, dedicate our, our any, any um, uh, percentage or amount of our time or energy toward that foolishness. We're just going to walk away from it and embrace greatness. Father, in this hour, within, within seconds, minutes, and hours, and some few days, replace every adverse situation with something great for us. Super. <laughs> but Lord, I know you're going to do this. I feel the anointing so strong. Here. Replace all adversity. Wipe away every tear. Erase every pain that has afflicted us in any way and replace it with, our, with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. And not just that, but with tangible results of the miraculous in our business life, in our financial life, in our personal life. Every promise and dream that you have for us, that's, that's something good. Let it commence for us forth right now today. In Jesus' name. Now you that are listening to me, take assessment and analyze everything in your life. Say, what am I doing that's not productive? I'm changing it from today. Who do I need to embrace? Who do I need to connect with that can really help me? I can help them. You know, everything is a win-win situation. Become a master. Ask the Lord for the grace and work on it to become a skilled warrior, a skilled artisan, a skilled artist a skilled practitioner in making your presence a wonderful experience for the other person that's with you. And don't worry about the negative. Anything that's negative, cancel it. Anything that's wrong, remove it. Anything that's not going to budge or produce, find a way for it to work or step away from it or compartmentalize it or departmentalize it. You know, not everybody can do everything, you know. People have different levels of, of things that they can do. Everybody has some value in the body, right? But the thing that you want, it's really out there. And don't look in the wrong place for it. Find it from where it is. Make that your mission from today. And ask the Lord about people that you know. What is the purpose? What can they do? How can they help? How can they be a good experience for me? Even if something's been... At, Adverse. Now, the criminal and the crook and the con and the liar and the cheat and the deceiver and the adversary need to be just judged and destroyed and removed from your company forever. I pray that happens from today. If any manipulator, oppressor, liar, foolish person is anywhere in your world, God is dismissing them from you from this very moment and hour right now. The angels of the Lord, go and make it happen in Jesus' name. Let no one ever treat any of your own people or my beloved uh, family, spiritually, my tribe, my sons and daughters or my uh, members of our ministry, people that are connected with us in however, whatever way, let no one ever mistreat you in any way in Jesus' name. You're valuable. You're to be valued. 
And as I was saying last week, find a place of praise, praiseworthiness in every situation. Find a positive, connective place where you can produce something good. And everything has to turn for the better from today. The Lord gave me a prophetic word some weeks ago. And there's a clip going around the internet, uh, social media is now. It says, everything will become better from now. The Lord said, declare, I'm telling you this, my son, for yourself, and I want you to declare it to my people. Everything is now changing for the better. Adverse days are over. I'm reminded of Isaiah 40. Comfort my people. Speak to my afflicted people and say, your warfare has ended. Peace comes to you now. Your warfare is over. When I first heard that from the Spirit of the Lord, I said, what? Warfare is over? Don't seem like it. Where? But I take it. I take it. I take it. I take it as a prophecy. I take it as a prophecy. It doesn't even seem so applicable in every situation with everybody, especially in our crazy world. But I take it. Her war, tell her her warfare has ended. So that season of adversity for a certain people, I want to say it's me. I also want to say it's you. And all of our beloved friends around the world. Warfare has ended. It's time for the blessing now. It's time for the affliction to cease. It's time for the adversity to be broken away from you. In Jesus' name. Parabore shakela. I pray for physical miracles of healing, deliverance, but also for breakthroughs of favor, financial flows coming to people, new sources of income, new sources of blessing, new business things appearing, things that will work, not things that people will spin their wheels in and it won't lead anywhere. I've never seen a deception of such foolishness of so many people that or get involved in this, and this is the process to this. And then you, you know, after doing all the jumping through all the hurdles and investing and, you know, losing time and money and resources and all that, and, and you didn't get the prize. Those stupid liars, may God crush them to powder in Jesus' name. I had a vision of some people. I said, you know, if they're, if they're not doing right in the thing that they're presenting, they, they're not going to make it. I saw gravestones for them with their names on them in a vision. I saw it twice in a row, two days in a row, one day, some weeks back. So people don't need to play with God. We, you know, anybody that wants to play with God and his own servants and his elect and his good people, it's never a good story for them. Please know that. God even told David in the Psalm, Psalm 34, fret not yourself because of evildoers. Psalm 34 and Psalm 37, two great Psalms to read. There's many others, but those are two. And he said, for the wicked will soon be cut off, but the righteous are going to flourish like a palm tree, but the wicked will be cut down. Know this, my son. When you see the wicked prosper in the way and it causes you pain and grief, how are they doing well? And us, your people, were having issues. God said, don't worry, because they're not going to make it to where you're coming. They're not going to be with me. How sad is that? Now everybody can repent. I pray for everybody to repent everywhere. The times of refreshing has come for the presence of the Lord, Acts 3.19. A time of repentance. And then the presence of the Lord will come. And refreshing by the Spirit of the Lord. It needs to happen for the individual. Father, I pray that every adversity that came one way is fleeing seven ways, as you said in Deuteronomy 28, between the first and the 14th verse. They came one way, but they're fleeing seven ways. You'll be blessed in everything you do, everything you touch, everywhere you go. Blessing, blessing, blessing. Isaiah 60. Kings will come to the brightness of our rising, and the forces of the Gentiles are coming. The wealth of nations are coming into our hands. We receive Ecclesiastes 2.26. Said God gives the job to the sinner to gather and collect good things to then give those good things over to the one who's good before God. And that's me. Ecclesiastes 5.19, I think it is somewhere in there. Some, some, I think it's Ecclesiastes 5. It might be the 19th verse if I'm right, but we can look it up. Wealth is the gift of God. If someone has that, write it on the screen. Ecclesiastes 5, 
There's a scripture that says, wealth is the gift of God. Ecclesiastes 2.26, good things are coming to me. Just write it short in a shorter version. Good things are coming to me. Deuteronomy 8.18, I give you power to get wealth. Uh, Proverbs 13.22. Proverbs 13.22 said this. The wealth of the wicked is later for the righteous. When is it going to happen? It has to happen now. The clock is ticking. Tick tock, tick tock, said the clock. Time is going. We need to get busy about the Father's business. Take assessment of everything in your world and say, now, this fits, this doesn't fit, or this doesn't fit here, it fits over there. This I need to have a vacancy for this spot. I need to have these kind of operations. I need to have these kind of things running. Somebody knows how to do it. Someone God has ordained, they're, they're available somewhere, probably even closer to me than I think. They're coming into my space, into my place, into my grace. We're going to work together, and things are going to flourish for me. I am going to be made rich. You know, the Bible says, the blessing of the Lord makes you, did he say, like, be okay and have some money to pay your bills? No. Did he say, I'll just sustain you to help you pay uh, for rental properties and things you have need to buy? No. He said, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. Makes me rich. What is rich? You can't mistake rich. You know, you know the word rich, it's just an unmistakable word. Wealth, treasure, millions, you know. Resources in abundance. The word abundance, you can't mistake it. The word opulence means very elegant and high level. Five-star, first-class, gloriously uh, uh, put-together things. You can't mistake any of that. God says, I make you a royalty, a royal priesthood. Come on. You're kings and priests unto the Most High. Revelation 1.6, he's made us kings and priests unto himself. Paul said, you are to reign as kings in this life. One of his epistles, he said, we're to, I think it's Romans 5, somewhere like that. You can look it up. We find it. We are to reign as kings, or 4 or 5. Rome, I think it's in Romans. We are to reign in, as kings in life, wherever that is in the epistle of, epistles of Paul. I don't have time to look for it right now. We are to reign as royalty, as kings in life. Galatians 4, 1 said, your Lord of all, but you're not, you're not acting like it, so you're just going to suffer like a mere child, like a commoner. Though you be Lord of all, you differ nothing then but from a child or from a servant because of the way you're carrying on, the mindset you have, the environment you're in, though you actually be in reality Lord of all. <laughs> well, Lord, help us. When are we going to take these seriously? When are we really going to? I, I, I do. I'm a word man. I'm a word person. You know, sometimes I wonder, I should be standing on the stage, you know, dancing, screaming, you know, saying cheeky things, you know, and to get into this like cultural psycho babble in the, in the church, you know, like blah, 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 to make people get all, you know, stirred up and excited or, or, or to be more shallow or whatever. But I'm a teacher. I, I'm a word man. I... I can't help myself. I can't, I can't apologize for this anointing or the grace, the way it flows. You know, you, you got to work with me. You got to listen for a while. You got you to tap into the grace and catch the revelation of what, what the Holy Spirit, the anointing is upon his words and will produce for you in your life. Resign from adversity. Are you doing it? Everybody say it'll be right now. Lord. Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, I resign from adversity. I resign this very moment and hour for the rest of my life from anything afflictive, anything oppressive, anything manipulative, anything that's lacking, anything that's low luster, anything that's not attaining to the prize of the high calling, Anything that's not attached to treasures and blessing and riches and wealth. I don't need it. Because Psalm 112 said, Wealth and riches will be in the house of those that fear me. 
and even their seed, their children, their family, their heritages will be mighty upon the earth. Korantala parantala kashataya. The blessing of the Lord. It's real. Father, forgive us for all sin. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, according to 1 John 1 and 9. Right now. Everybody pray that right now. Father, forgive me of any sin, any sin I committed, any sin of omission, something I was supposed to do that I didn't do, something I did that I wasn't supposed to do. In your eyes, forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Another prayer. Lord, I forgive everyone. Say it. I forgive everyone that's ever wronged me. Sometimes it's not easy to think like that. But it's a command in Scripture, and it gives us a blessing. In Jesus' name, I forgive all. Say it. In Jesus' name, I forgive all. Father, in Jesus' name, I forgive everyone. I forgive myself, even for where I missed it, where I, I, I didn't make the proper use of time and things I was supposed to, I, I could have done. I, I, I see the, the mistakes. I see the time lost. I see the opportunity lost and missed. I can't keep beating myself up over it. I have to rise up today, right now, and do what I can from this moment. You know, a friend of mine said, we were having a conversation, said, you know, yeah, yesterday, from yesterday, it, it's not changeable. And then when something adverse comes up and we stumble on a thing that was very painful, as far as for myself, something bad I went through, I say, uh, hmm, can we, do, can we talk about something else? Can we shift the conversation now? So if I, if I, you poke that bear, the bear's, the, the grizzly's going to rise up and growl. Don't do that. Deflate the balloon, forget it. In fact, take it out and throw it away and never remember it again. Do you know the greatest men are one that have learned how to forgive, how to forget, how to overlook extra grace? Though some things are infuriating that evil people do, persecution and attack, you can't take it personally. Anybody that goes on a high level, especially if you're famous, there are people that will hate you. The haters are out there. Any A-lister in any industry, whether you're in the billionaire business world, whether you're in the limelight of media, in the entertainment world, Hollywood, the sports arena, you're a celebrity of any kind, you're a well-known preacher, you're a well-known person, you're a famous person, you're in media, you're whatever. There are people that will just hate you for that. Are you going to take their stupidity as truth, no, you toss it away and don't even look at it. I have a friend, there's three websites tracking him now. One that tracks his movements with his private jet. The other one that tracks his, uh, uh, what watch he's wearing. And another one, uh, this is Bulgari, by the way, if you wanted to know. Bulgari, and they spell the U like a V, U V Italian. I don't think it's do it like that. Bulgari, it's a designer brand. And uh, somebody gave him a Rolex worth almost $50,000, and he's wearing it, and they show him like this, you know. They took a really great picture of him from his studio, and they broadcast it on the website, and they call it Profits and Watches. And he says, I'm not even a prophet. He's an evangelist pastor. He says, he's joking. He said, I'm not even a prophet, and they put me in this... And he says, I'm not going to argue with them and tone it down and say they shouldn't have it. He said, by the way, this was given to me by somebody. But he said, even if I bought it with the money, it was my money to buy it with. Rise up. I heard Jesse Duplantis saying that. I was listening to him last night, early, very early this morning. Very, very early this morning. The sun was maybe just about to come up. I don't know. And I clicked on a few of his messages, they popped up one after the other, and I was watching. And he was saying, enjoy the blessing of God. Don't listen to the dogs barking out there. You know, people ask when you have something great, like what about the poor people that can't even eat, and then you have all this money, and you're living this lifestyle. He says, no, like my own jet that I fly. He says, by the way, I have two. He says, I just got a Falcon 7X, glory be to God. And he's, some of his people said, some of the people in his church, you know, they also have to work their mind. You can see them sitting there looking at him like, hmm. And I'm thinking, yeah, some of those people, their blood is probably almost boiling. You know, here's that pastor, Brother Jesse, you know, talking about his jet. And he says, by the way, 
I'm really going for this thing. So in fact, I have another one. I also have a Falcon 900. Then he said, I found a way to get wholesale fuel. He said, one trip to Europe and back, I save $150,000 just on fuel. He's the only one that has a fuel farm, supposedly. I don't know where they make it. Or He said in Europe it was like $10 a gallon or a liter, $10. And he said, I get it for like, I can, we, we get it for about $2, 2 or $3 for jet fuel. Because he has a way. God blessed him. God knew he was going to have the jets and cooking them, burning them, going everywhere. You know, burning the fuel. So he made a way to save all that money. Another friend, he started to charter planes. He did it very painstakingly, you know, financially. Gladly to spend a lot of money to fly private and stop flying commercial. To take care of himself. Now he's one of the premier ministries. He always looks fresh. He never looks tired. I only saw him look tired twice. I marvel at that. He only looked tired twice. I saw him look tired. But he, his schedule was unbelievable. But every day he comes out, he's fresh with a new suit on, looking great, beautiful, shining, glowing, looking vivacious and energetic. Why? Takes care of himself. Gets out of his nice car, gets in the jet, walks up the stairs, sits down, opens his Bible in the presence of God, can fly across the country quick, get there, preach, do the meeting, the jet's outside, takes him back. You know, Smith Wigglesworth, you, you think this is odd. Smith Wigglesworth had the revelation. He's the apostle of faith. Because he was way back then, people said, well, people back then, they didn't have all kinds of extravagant things. No, Smith Wigglesworth did, and he got criticized by another preacher. Smith Wigglesworth's name is ringing in generations past now. And this other guy, no one ever heard of him. He said, uh, oh, that first class ticket on the train. You know, they used to take ships and trains back then. They didn't have planes. He was living in the early 19... 19- Hundreds, yeah. I think he died in 47 when he was 87. So maybe he's in the 1920s when he's out there. They didn't have, you know, private jets. They didn't have, definitely didn't have cell phones. I told you about that. They didn't have any of that stuff. So they'd have the first class train or a first class cabin in a ship, you know, traveling across the water to another country. And he would take that. And the guy says, Shouldn't you spare the money, you know? And Smith the Wigglesworth barked back at the guy, retorted back to him, no, uh, mister, I'm sparing the servant. I'm spending the money. Shouldn't you spare the money and not spend it? He said, no, I'm spending the money to spare the servant. In other words, I'm taking care of myself that I'm fresh. When I get to the other place, I'm ready to be more of a use for God. There's a kid that came on the internet, and I asked one of my friends, I said, who, what is this kid talking about? He's talking in Swahili. He said, oh, this little kid, he's parroting somebody's message, you know, funny, vivacious little kid. He'll probably be an actor. or He'll be some kind of, you know, some, maybe a preacher, who knows. And he's going on. He has a gift to speak. Young little boy. He says, uh, you know, people, no matter what you do, you they're going to talk. If you do nothing, they're going to talk. If you do something, they're going to talk. Yep, yep, yep. You know that old spill? But it's true, so don't worry about it. You think you want to tone things down to appease certain people? There's a prophet in Los Angeles who I started listening to, and I really like, I don't like everybody. I don't, I listen to people I know when they're, if they're real, I can just kind of see into it and see. But this guy was really intriguing. And here they have a couple of guys go on the internet because when you're powerful, some of this other guy in Africa was slandering the guy. I saw his video. I thought, you, someone needs to just knock you straight in the head and put you down on the ground for speaking blasphemy. You're yelling at a, you're yelling at a man of God who's really anointed. You know, criticizing openly. He's just jealous. He's jealous because the guy's so blessed. And the guy told his testimony, the prophet in L.A. He told, he told his testimony how much he suffered when he's growing up. So he said, now anything he has... He can't apologize for it. He just has to enjoy it. I told the Lord uh, the other night, last night or the night before, I was praying, and I told the Lord that. I said, you know what? Some things I've been through. You know, in this next round, when I get everything that I can get that's so luxurious, I am going to use it to the full and really enjoy it. I made another vow to God. I'm going to enjoy it without remorse, without regret, without uh, uh, 
but I won't be embarrassed about it. I will enjoy it. And if some people can't handle it, that's their problem. God gave it to me. Lift your hands. When God blesses you, just enjoy it. Don't worry about other, what other people think. So this guy was saying, I, I, if I get this or I get that, you know, and I have a nice Rolex, I get all kinds of beautiful tailor-made clothes, I travel extravagantly. You know, God gave me that. But how much I suffered in the preparation for what I'm doing today, nobody even knows. And he began to tell some of the stories. I was like, I know, I get it. I see you're anointed. I know it cost you something. Lift your hands. You know what? The anointing's not cheap. Let me just say something in the realm of uh, discipleship. Deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. This walk is not a joke, you know. It, it, it'll cost you something. Some of the things, the price that you paid, other people didn't pay. They couldn't pay. They wouldn't pay. They, probably, they may probably never pay. And then you get the result. Are you going to worry about, like, you know, feeling uh, 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 apprehensive about what God's given you? No, don't do it. And Jesse, Brother Jesse was saying that. Dr. Jesse was saying that. Just enjoy it. Go forth. He said God, he said this prophetically, God is even watching you, looking at you and observing you to see how he can bless you. That's the kind of preaching we need to listen to. Lift your hands. If I, some people often ask me, who do you recommend to listen to? Listen to the faith guys. Listen to the guys that talk about great prosperity and great faith, and how to work it. Forget about all the other stuff. Just focus on that, because you, you need so much of an infusion and an injection of that to get in your spiritual bloodstream, so to speak, to break off everything negative that has, that has to do with poverty and all kinds of corruption and filth that goes on in this world. You need it. You need to feed yourself. I don't want to tell uh, my secrets here, but I tell you, there are men that I listen to. Oh, yes, certain men of God that I listen to, like daily. I don't tell anybody I'm doing it. I do it in my own time. The hours I do it, I won't even tell you. Whenever I get time, I, I listen to it. I feed myself with victory every single day. Can you imagine the environment? I think of people that go to certain churches and the kind of noise they make and what they do. And they're, ah, I'm like, the people, the spiritual garbage or whatever, or the low level of nothingness that's even being brought from the microphone in the music and the preaching and the whatever. And in many places, yeah? And I think, what's the result going to be of the person in the next week when they have all the devils to fight and they have struggles in their life? How are they going to get a breakthrough? You know what? It's the responsibility of leaders. I thought I was going to close a few minutes ago, but I'm, the Holy Ghost is... I got a second wind here. The Holy Ghost is moving here. Listen, and I know this is powerful. Listen. It's our responsibility to teach the people to lead them. Hosea 12, 13, by a prophet, they were led out of bondage, out of the wilderness, and, and, and they were preserved by the grace of the prophet. You need to sow into this grace. Do it from today. Make a decision. Say, I'm going to... I'm going to work with the prophet. I'm going to be a missions partner. I'm going to be a tither. I'm going to be a donor. I'm going to be a giver. I look forward to hearing from you in that. Make sure you ask for my books. Many others are coming out. We'll be announcing them and uh, uh, different events that will be coming up and all that. The Lord bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you, give you and give you his peace and give you also his power, his prosperity, and also his favor and the victorious breakthrough that you've been waiting for. It's coming forth to you today, my friend. It's coming forth in your life in a new way from this moment and hour, right now, here today. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm Thomas Manton IV. All the principles by the Spirit of God originated with this great book, the Holy Bible. It's all here. It originated from here. His word is his bond. He exalts his word even above his own name. His word is truth and the light of life to the nations of the world and his, his precious people everywhere. Get into it. Get into it. Study it. And also, take stock, analysis of your life. I, I'll give you one more thing. Write down what it is you'd like to have in the next 12 months. 
Then make another list and say, what do I need to have in one month? And then say, what can I start to do from today, or if it's evening, tomorrow morning, first thing, that I can begin to do that's going to produce something for me in the next week, the next two weeks? Begin to think like that. Regulate your mind to flow like that, and you'll see the results. Resign from everything adverse. Walk away from everything foolish. Embrace the real. Two keys to success that are paramount. You need to know what to embrace and what to avoid. Success comes from avoiding the wrong and disconnecting from the wrong as much as it is from embracing and following the right. Do it in a new way from today. Father, I pray for a spirit a spiritual awakening of fire, a spiritual renewal, a, I don't even like the word, it's not strong enough, a spiritual uh, uh, avalanche, tsunami, a wave, a volcanic eruption, a fire to come from your power, from your own self into every person that wants to prosper and succeed and move ahead. Let it begin from this very hour right now that within a short time you'll be one of the ones sending me also a testimony like the ones I read to you. In Jesus' name, of miracle breakthroughs. Father, I pray for the miraculous flow. I look forward to hearing from you. As you do, you're becoming my partner, and I will be praying for you prophetically. I look forward to seeing those that I can see in person also. And you, we also can communicate by phone and online. Call me, contact me. I look forward to hearing from you. I am praying for you. I love you. And get ready for the greatest days you've ever seen. They're coming forth right now. In Jesus' name. I am Thomas Manton IV. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering. You can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.